Hey, hey everybody, this is me, Mega Man here, and I'm the Blue Bomber here from the Capcom franchise. And welcome back to more of the, um, my video game collection video. Yes, it has been quite a few months since last time. I think last time we did done, it was actually where Knuckles did manage to finish up the Game Boy series, um, game collection video. Like the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, and then all kinds of stuff. So today, for this little, um, my video game collection video, um, session, is going to be my childhood, um, favorite video games of all time, which is... Nintendo 64. This machine was released in Japan and the United States, or in this case North America, in 1996, and in Europe a year later, in 1997. Now, this thing right here is now 20 years old for Japan, so that's a good thing too, since we're going to be doing this for as a 20th anniversary of the Nintendo 64 itself. So yeah, it's kind of cool actually, you know, the uh, introduction to these four controller slots, and as well as the, um, the cartridge-based console, just like the Super Nintendo. And this thing is quite large from the looks of it though. And uh, one thing before we actually get started with this, if you couldn't tell, the quality itself is actually much different compared to um, the one we used to use. It's because I'm going to be doing a first ever video to actually use the mobile phone video. So that'll be the first time ever we're going to be seeing this quality for the time being, folks. And let us go to know in the comments below if, um, what you think of this quality overall. And you should definitely see that when we get into the upper video game collection video, especially the later ones. Because the first time three we actually did use, it was actually the waterproof camera um, by itself. But hey, at least we can use the iPhone um, iPhone video for the time being. So um, anyway, so without further ado, let's get started with the Nintendo 64 collection. And yes, just like how it does it for the Game Boy series, we might actually do the honorable mentions to the Nintendo Wii's virtual console downloads, as, as far as I will uh, actually include in that. So, um, anyway, I have got quite a few games for the cartridge games, and even more from the Wii's virtual console version, but I'll get into that in a second. However, unfortunately, I didn't get any of them from the Wii, Wii U's virtual console games, because I already got them from the Nintendo White Wii system. So, anyways, let's get started. So, as usual, we're going to be starting with the alphabetical order, so, um, yeah, let's get started. First up, 1080 Snowboarding. I don't know why I got this, just for my curiosity's sake, and because of that, it was now available for the Wii's virtual console, including the Wii U's virtual console version, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's what I was going to say in that right there. So, if I play this, it's actually quite a lot of fun, but it takes a little bit longer to get used to with the controls and all that, just for me, anyway. But, um, overall, I did have a great fun with that part. I got it with the, um, Nintendo 64 system all by itself, amongst some of the other games as well. But sadly, no Mario games, sadly. But anyway. Next up, Banjo-Kazooie. I absolutely love this game here. And if you guys, you couldn't tell already, that, um, Defi and Twilight Sparkle actually finished this, this game Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. The version they did use is the Xbox Live Arcade version, because, um, well, just to be a sake of being for um, HD um, quality and all that. And also I found that I found out that between this version here, I got in my hand, including the Xbox 360 version, is the fact that this game actually has a different difficulty um, to part for, um, between this and the Xbox Live Arcade version. The N64 version is considerably the harder between the two, because um, when you die in a level, you have to re grab the every single stuff again. But then in the Xbox Live Arcade version, then you can actually keep your stuff already. So, um, luckily, if you those who actually purchase the Xbox One, that I'm um, sure many people already do, is the fact that you can now actually get the um, Banjo Kazooie, the um, the download version on the Xbox One, or the Rare um, Replay, which is essentially a rare, rare. Um, games compilation, so yeah, it's a pretty good bonus for my tip. Next up, Diddy Kong Racing for Nintendo 64. Yes, of all these two versions of um, Diddy Kong Racing, I think the N64 version is definitely the most superior version, because, although first things first though, that the only downside I can think of about the DS version is the fact that trying to actually start the race can be a bit of a little bit of a problematic, because you have to use the stylus and all that. First in this version, you can simply just press A every time when the get ready sign is slowly vanished. But um, overall, I seem to actually pretty enjoy this. Actually, I still even remember to this game, especially from my childhood. 
But um, I'm stuck at the moment right now is the fact that the silver coin challenges are goddamn hard, especially consist on the um, Adventure 2 mode, which, for my knowledge, I haven't got into the, um, the Adventure 2 already. Well, I will get back into it at some point or another. I kind of wish how this game will actually re released on the Wii U's virtual console, but I don't know why they actually not released that yet. Donkey Kong 64. I pretty much fucking tell that I actually really enjoyed the opening sequence in this Donkey Kong 64 game because it, it introduces the song called um, DK Rap. That's actually really classic, I have to say. And, um,. I, as far as when I played it, I haven't played it too much since, although the reason I decided to bring this up right here is because I will decide to go ahead and play this game for my own time to actually complete this on my own time. And yes, this game is also re-released on the Wii U's eShop um, virtual console game, but except on Nintendo Wii, because I don't know why. But yeah, for what I've heard of it, it's actually a really, really good game overall, but I haven't gone to that yet, so I need to do that on my own time. Next up... Fighter's Destiny. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing this game though. Although, I, I kind of feel sad about this because I haven't touched this game since then. Although, the last time I did touch this was actually whenever I tried to unlock these certain characters and all that kinds of stuff. Although, there's only one unlockable character that I can think of is when you're actually trying to complete the game in the arcade mode for the first time. And I think that that's about it basically. I haven't unlocked the rest of the characters yet because I do not know how do I unlock them. But anyway. As far as the 2D fighting game is concerned, or in this case, 2.5D um, fighting game, I had to be a lot more fun than that. Then, and yeah, this game also has a sequel to it, but unfortunately, it never seemed, never saw the release in Europe. But it already did came out in uh, North America, I think. But Fighters Destiny is a really, really fun um, fighting game. You should definitely recommend getting it. And speaking of recommend to yourselves, that I'm sure many people already do. GoldenEye 007, which appears to be Pierce Brosnan version, which makes sense because the GoldenEye 007 film came out in 1995, and then in two years later, after when Nintendo 64's launch um, was about to be released on 1996 right here, in 1997, I don't think you can focus on, can I? Um, come on, let's see how this focus. Nah, it's not a good focus. Anyway, um... As far as when I played this, I had a lot of fun with this. Definitely one of my favorite first-person shooter games on Nintendo 64. And yes, there's also another one called Perfect Dark, but I haven't exactly got it yet. But maybe I will do it at some point or another, eventually. So, um, yeah, this game also being re-released on a Nintendo Wii's, um, Nintendo Wii version of GoldenEye 007, but rather than just actually having Pierce Brosnan with him, in this case, in it, but instead it's been replaced by Daniel Craig, which... I don't mind about it too much, but it's just the fact that um, some people might think that, um, although, I forget what I just said, anyway, so yeah, pretty fun though, especially if you actually play it in multiplayer, which you definitely recommend it, so, um, although, conveniently enough though, I managed to discover this in my own time for one another, it's the fact that, um, Originally, GoldenEye 007 was supposed to be ported to the, um, or in this case, just about to have a remake on Xbox Live Arcade, but due to the fact they actually just trying to, um, I think sadly though that, um, particular versions got cancelled due to the technical difficulties or probably, I don't know, I just had no sense of, um, information on that, but anyway, back into what I was going to go for, anyway, Lawyer Dwarves, aka Star Fox 64 from outside of North America and Japan as well. Yeah, I really absolutely love this game, probably my favourite Star Fox game of all time. Because the reason for that is because, well, for one, the graphics look really, really remarkable, especially in Nintendo 64 standards. And also that um, the voice cast has been added, even though the Super Nintendo doesn't usually have it, known as Star Wing, aka Star Fox. And then, um, yeah, this game also re-released on the Wii's virtual console version, and also um, the Wii U's virtual console version. In this case, it calls it Star Fox 64, because it makes sense, because, well... Although, I don't mind about the European name related, Lyot Wars, but um, usually in North America it calls it Star Fox 64. And also this game actually has a port to it, if you guys should know from the 3DS game collection video, Star Fox 64 3D, which that was definitely the most superior version out of all these two. So yeah, definitely recommended that if you're actually trying to be curious to try that. But yeah, I'm sure many people will do well. Next up, 
Mario Party, the one that started it all with the Mario Party franchise. Yeah, not a lot to say about this game, it's just basically it's fun for all the four players and all that kinds of stuff. Over 50 minigames overall, it's not that bad for um, the minigame compilation, but hey. Uh, um, the only um, part I seem to remember for the longest time is the fact that the rotation controls can be really, really painful moments. But yeah, you guys should know about this game because I think that we already done this playthrough of it. And um, I seem to have actually really enjoyed it so far. And um, yeah, pretty cool to actually start off with the Mario Party franchise. And speaking of which, Mario Party 3. Now, of all the Nintendo 64 Mario Party games, Mario Party 3 is definitely is the rarest one out of all. Because, for one, that, um, I don't know why the selling point wasn't selling too drastically to, compared to the first game and the second game, but I think that's what this is. But anyway, um, we did play Sonic's favorite uh, Mario Party game on the Nintendo 64 trilogy, and... Yeah, this game that came out in 2001, and for what I've played it, it's actually a lot of fun, just like how it does in the first game, including the second game as well. And in fact, there's also the same likes of every single Mario Party games, except Mario Party bands, because I just did not like Mario Party bands at all. But anyway, so yeah, combined with um, the great visuals, which it kind of reminds me like I was related to Paper Mario title or something like that, but then as well as the, um, the addition to actually having... Um, Two new playable characters introduced, like Daisy and Waluigi, and all that kinds of stuff. And I think that's actually a pretty enjoyable game, though. So yeah, despite there's a one little, little bit of a technical um, hiccup for me, is the computer AI's difficulty, which I have to suggest. But anyways, that's just me. Star Wars Episode One: Racer. Yeah, I actually quite like this game, actually, because I had a lot more fun with um, when I was a kid, though. Although, granted, I don't usually have a Nintendo 6, although I did seem to have a Nintendo 64 when I was in that age. But, um, apart from those sorts of things, that I seem to really enjoy it. However, I got really, really sucky when it comes to doing with this. I think it's recent because some of these obstacles, mainly the meteors, for example, they are quite impossible to go through. In this case, quite hard to dodge, though. But anyway, that's just for my um, beginner's racers um, when it comes to controlling these kinds of stuff. But still, can't really complain about um, how I actually capable of controlling stuff when I was a little kid. But honestly, that's just how it is when it comes to doing video gaming stuff when you're first time, first time around. Super Mario 64! Yahoo! Look at this Mario face. Seems to think that, oh no, mamma mia, I might just get burned by Bowser the bag. But anyway, um, so yeah, um... Super Mario 64, this was probably my favorite Nintendo 64 game of all time, next to um, Banjo-Kazooie, um, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and GoldenEye 007, and um, as well as Diddy Kong Racing as well. And yes, this is, appears to be a um, the Mario's launch title for this system, next to the likes of um, Super Nintendo's um, Super Mario World, which is essentially a launch title for the Super Nintendo, and then in the latest uh, one, which is essentially New Super Mario Bros. U, which is a launch title for the Nintendo Wii U. And then, then Super Mario 64 was actually a launch title for the Nintendo 64. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So yeah, you guys should know about this game because uh, Mickey did actually redo this as a part of the, re um, the Let's Play of it. So you guys know what uh, Mickey was trying to talk about. And also you can check that out in a, somewhere down there our channel though. So anyway. Toy Story 2. Now, the thing is about this version though, I kind of prefer the PlayStation 1 version over this, although it's not as bad as I think about it, although I really enjoyed it when I was a kid, but I haven't gone to the final level when I was a kid because I'm stuck on the airport terminal level, because you have to deal with, um, you know, a lot of platforming, a lot of collector funds, and I haven't exactly completed any objective on that level because I was got confused and lost in that area. But, um, yeah, as far as this um, version is concerned, I think this is probably is my least favorite version of Toy Story 2 because I kind of prefer the PlayStation 1 version a bit more because of the cutscenes. Because in this version, I guess it's just a little um, still images, which I kind of don't like at first. And also the audio, uh, the audio side of things is kind of um, meh to me. But um, still, I, I don't think I have any complaints with it. But um. Unfortunately though, for my copy right here of the Toy Story 2 for the Nintendo 64 version, doesn't work. 
Because one time I actually got into is the fact that whenever I got into um, the, Empire, um, the Evil Emperor Zerg boss battle, and what happens is is that the game temporarily crashed whenever when I'm trying to save the game or what have you. So yeah, that was a bit of a um, a bit of unfortunate thing for my part. But um, anyway, next two, or in this case, next up, Turok Rage Wars. Haven't ex I did not know exactly how do I got this. Although the only time I got it is with the bundle with Nintendo 64, alongside with the other games as well. Now the um. As far as Torwalk Rage was, I haven't touched it yet. I haven't played it for freaking donkey's years, to be honest, because I haven't played too much on first-person shooter games, although the only time I played these first-person shooter games is easily GoldenEye 007. Speaking of which, Torwalk 2 C to Vivo, again, just like um, Torwalk Rage Wars, I just got this just for curiosity's sake, and because of that, um, I just couldn't uh, potentially play those, to be honest, because I just did not know what I was going to do. And finally, for the cartridge games anyway, until we get to the virtual console lineup, Wave Race 64. I absolutely enjoyed this game. Probably the coolest looking um, game out of all for the launch titles on Nintendo 64. S strangely enough, this game did came out in 1996, though. Kind of think about it, yeah. But again, because of the North American's um, launch titles for a sake of being. But um, anyway, as far as this game's concerned, that was actually pretty enjoyable for me. Like, I really, really enjoy how the courses looked, and also how unique how they, um, this racing game to looks like it. And yeah, this game has also been re-released on the, um, the Wii's virtual console version, including the Wii U version as well. So yeah, definitely recommended this particular racing game. So um, that's it for the cartridge games out of the way, and now we'll move on to the honorable mentions to you guys of how uh, what games did why we have on Nintendo Wii's virtual console version on the in this case that we're using the white Wii because you know from the, the consoles um, showcase you saw that means we're gonna have to showcase them onto the white Wii. So we'll meet you there at a just a second. Alright, so here I am from the Nintendo Wii's console, in this case the Nintendo 64's virtual console games lined up, so with that being said, here are the honorable mentions to my Nintendo 64 collection, so here we go. First things first though, that um, we got ourselves quite a large amount of N64 games into my white Wii console, and there are eight of them showing up in the, on the Wii menu at the moment. As well as some quite a few ones on in my SD card, but we'll get into that in a second until later. But anyway, now as far as I already mentioned, Super Mario 64, but I also managed to get this on the Wii virtual console, by the way, which I felt kind of bad for myself. So anyways, Mario Kart 64, I pretty much safe to say that this is pretty much a basically a second in variation of Mario Kart, definitely recommend it, and you should probably get this on the cartridge version or the car virtual console version as well for the Wii and the Wii U. And Paper Mario, fantastic RPG, but I'm still stuck on certain moments like basically Chapter 5, finding all the baby Yoshis, that's the part I'm stuck on, but definitely recommend it. Mario Party 2, fans favorite Mario Party game. Which I definitely agree to that, just uh, like the fact that, like how, um, it removed the control, um, the rotation controls type of feeling, and you should definitely recommend it. Well, luckily though, this game has also been re-released on the Wii U's virtual console, probably because of the population of the Mario Party trilogy. Super Smash Bros. from Nintendo 64, definitely recommended that, you should definitely give this a shot. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, as I said earlier, it's probably be one of my third favorite Nintendo 64 games of all time. And this game is also being re-released on the Wii U at the moment right now, and it's also the same likes of the 3DS version as well. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, definitely a obscured um, Zelda game you might actually try out for the Nintendo 64. And this game is also being re-released on the Wii U's virtual console, including the 3DS version as well. So yeah, you should definitely go ahead and recommend it. I haven't played too much on Majora's Mask though, but we'll get to that on my own time. Uh, Cruising USA, definitely one of the cooler racing games on Nintendo 64, even though it does have some bit of issues compared to the arcade version, but um, as far as I can consider that, they should probably go in and rent it or something like that. Kirby 64, The Crystal Assurance, definitely a really fun game for me. As, as a matter of fact though, if you're a Kirby fans out there, you should definitely go ahead and get this for either a cartridge version, or if you're in North America or Japan, you can actually get this on the Kirby's Dream Collection on Nintendo Wii. So yeah, that's a definitely lucky for um, 
um, North America and Japan owners. So um, anyway, yeah, I've already mentioned Super Mario 64, so there's no real point to that point of kinds of stuff. But I've already got that anyway. Uh, Pokemon Puzzle Lake, definitely a fun um, <clears throat> puzzle game for Nintendo 64. It does have some memorable cards from the anime from the Pokemon series. Uh, Pokemon Step. Probably my favorite childhood N64 games on the Nintendo 64 for Pokemon spin-off games. But I usually had a lot of fun with it. Maybe I could do that as an LP of some time in the future. Maybe it depends on what release date that will be on. But anyway. Mario Go for the N64. Haven't really touched this game at all, to be honest. Because most of the time, I just feel likely to be played the latest games in this series rather than this. But for what I've um, heard... It was actually a really fun game nonetheless, though, but I need to unlock some Kyoto's first in order to make the game slightly a bit more fun and addictive. Mario Tennis for Nintendo 64, one of the greatest starters of the Mario Tennis series, even though at the end of the Mario's Tennis run, mostly for the latest installment, Ultra Smash, is kind of a lame game. But you should definitely go ahead and recommend the N64 installment of Mario Tennis. And I believe, kind of think about it, that I think it's also really released on the Wii U, I don't know. Anyway, F-Zero X, definitely recommend it for the F-Zero series. Probably one of the coolest racing games on Nintendo 64. You can get that for the Wii Z Shop um, or the Nintendo Wii's virtual console. Or you can get it from uh, the cartridge version. I think it's costly, like cheaper nowadays. Yoshi Story, which I think is quite immensely an okay game. It's not a bad game by any means. It's just the fact that it gets even a bit difficult later on, though. Especially consists of the last world. And, yes, I think that wraps everything up for, um, the Nintendo 64 game collection video. I know it's been quite a lot of the N64 games we actually got right there, but even then, though, because I'm a huge fan of Nintendo 64, like, even then, that's more likely just to be opportunity all the way up there. So, anyways, that concludes for that video. So, this is me, Mega Man here from the Maxi Toys. And join, um, some, some toys next time for the next video game collection video. Next up, it will be the Nintendo GameCube. And for what I've noticed, I think Duffy might actually do that, um, collection. So, yeah, this is me, Mega Mega Man here, and I'll see you guys next time for some future videos of the Maxi Toys. So, see you guys then. Ciao.